Think the Copilot chat window is the only way to use AI in Excel? Well, think again. In this video, I'm going to show you five different ways that you can use AI to run your Excel workbooks. The best part? All five of these ways are easily accessible to you, and they're super easy to use. If you can use Excel, you can use AI in Excel, and I'm going to show you how right now. <music> Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Mike. I'm a senior finance leader, and over the last decade, I've worked in finance everywhere from brand new startups all the way to the Fortune 100. And over that time, I've helped companies automate more than 50,000 hours of work out of their processes. And today, I want to help you get some of those savings. In this video, I'm going to walk you step by step through five different ways that you can use AI to supercharge your Excel workbooks you won't believe how easy they can be. Make sure to stick around to the end because the fifth one is an absolute game changer. It was released just the week before last and my jaw absolutely dropped the first time I used it. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my free weekly newsletter, Finance Automation Insider. I send a copy out every single week with tips, tricks, and hacks just like this. Plus, when you sign up, I'll send you a guide to 15 five-minute finance automations that you can put into practice today. With all that out of the way, Let's get rolling. Now for the first way to use AI with Excel, we're not even gonna open Excel. That's because you can use tools like ChatGPT and Claude to create an Excel file so you don't have to start your Excel file from scratch. So you see, I've got ChatGPT up and this is where you can direct it to create a usable Excel file that you can open up and start working with immediately. So I'm gonna give it one of my favorite prompts. I'm gonna say act as a financial analyst. I need your help building a simple but functional three statement model. If you don't know a three statement model, this is where you have a file that connects the income statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows for forecasting purposes. So it's a very common thing that you would ask an analyst to do. It's used in a lot of finance functions, and I'm going to have ChatGPT build the template for us. It's a great way to generate templates that you can just start working with. Output this as a usable Excel file. All right, and we're gonna hit send and see what we get back. And Excel has already come back and said it's built the model for us. We can go ahead and click this. You see it ends in .xlsx. It has given us a downloadable three statement model. So here we've opened up the three statement model that ChatGPT gave us, and it is basic, but it is fully functional. Look at this. If I come down here to something like taxes, this is using math. It's using formulas. It's got the income statement, the balance sheet, the cash flow, and it did that in under 20 seconds. So it's a great way to generate templates that you can come into Excel and immediately start working with and shave off kind of that initial prep time. Wow, how cool is this? Have any questions? Go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I read and respond to every single question and I'm more than happy to help. Number two, it's actually been around a little bit before we had functionality like Copilot built right in, it's analyzed data. Now, if you come to the home tab and you come all the way over to the right, you're gonna find this button right here that says analyze data. You wanna make sure you've got some data that can analyze. Here I've got a table of a PL financial statement for the F9 Finance coffee shop. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the analyze data button the analyze window will come up and in just seconds, it has analyzed it. The really cool thing is you can ask questions and it's gonna prompt you different things that you can ask. It's gonna give you some insights. You can insert a pivot table straight from the insights it's giving you. It'll give you values by versions, locations. It's automatically broken down actuals and budget. And then it's recommending some pivot charts and charts. So what account is giving you the value? It's sales revenue. So many cool options just automatically reading your data set. All right, let's go ahead and ask it a question just to see what it comes back with. I'm gonna go ahead and paste a question in. Which of my locations has the highest value in the account sales revenue? So which of my three locations has the most revenue in this period? We'll go ahead and hit send and see what we get back. It has said we have Hell's Kitchen. I can insert a pivot table straight away if I want to, but Hell's Kitchen has the most sales revenue. Look at that. In just seconds, we are analyzing an entire table of data without having to do any of the analysis ourselves. 
How cool is that? The third way to use AI in Excel, we don't want to leave it out, even though it is the best known at the moment, that is Copilot in Excel. So I can come up here to this window for Copilot. Now you do need to have a Copilot subscription and be using Office 365 to see this. You're going to have a lot more flexibility using the ChatGPT method we looked at, as well as analyze data. But when you click this, the Copilot window comes up and it's going to start suggesting different things you can do. So here we are in Excel and I've got a table of all of the transactions from my point of sale system system for the F9 Finance coffee shop that I want to work with. Now we'll come up here to the top right and we're going to open the Copilot window. Now Copilot will give us some suggestions, but we're going to go ahead and say using table transactions forecast the next three months of sales using Python. Yes, that's right. You can prompt Copilot to use Python right in Excel. We'll go ahead and hit send and we'll see what we get back. So Copilot has come back. It used a time series forecasting approach to forecast based on the transaction date column, aggregating that and then doing our forecast for us. So you can see down here, if you want to see the Python code that it generated and ran, here's all of it. It queried pandas, one of the most common Python libraries. And here is all of the Python it wrote for us to analyze our data straight in Excel. This was an example of the output. I asked it to be popped over to a new sheet. So here is your forecast based on all of this messy transaction POS data, it's been able to consolidate it down and do a forecast of 35,000 transactions over the next three months. How cool is that? You just got an entire Python forecast without leaving Excel or writing a single line of code. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I post brand new videos every single week and I don't want you to miss a thing. Way number four to use AI with Excel is the AI functions. Now, equals copilot has been getting a lot of press. There's a really cool new function in beta testing where you can do equals copilot and then feed prompts right into copilot, referencing your data, referencing things dynamically, pulling up commentary, analyzing sentiment, all kinds of cool stuff you can do. The challenge is a lot of people aren't able to get access to it. If you're on an enterprise account, most organizations have not enabled beta testing. So the average user doesn't have access to this, but there's a way to get very similar functionality in a way that was developed a little bit before Copilot without having the restriction of needing to be given access to equals Copilot. And that way is through the Excel labs. So let me show you how to get the Excel labs. You'll see I already have it installed, but let's say that I didn't. You want to go to your add-ins, you want to search for add-ins, and just search for Excel labs. Excel Labs is going to come right up for you. It's going to look like this. You click that button, it's going to add immediately. And then when you click Excel Labs, several options of whatever Microsoft's testing at the moment is going to come up. We've got agent mode here. That's going to be number five. Spoiler alert. We've got advanced formula environment, labs.generative AI. This is what we're going to take a look at right now. And then the Python editor. So let's go ahead and open this up. And these are all of the instructions for what you can do with this and how you can use it. The moment you turn this on, you're gonna have access to a function called equals labs.generative AI. The functionality is nearly identical to Copilot. The only difference is you have to point it to your open AI account, whereas equals Copilot will use your existing Copilot. So to that point, if I scroll down here, you'll see you have this API key. I've got my OpenAI API key right here, and that's going to point it over to OpenAI. But again, it's so much more flexible because you aren't restricted by having Microsoft give you access to it, and you aren't restricted by having to use a Copilot subscription. So it's a lot more flexible. So since we've got a financial statement model here, let's go ahead and go over and see if we can have this help us pull some inputs. So let's say for our first input, we want this to be target cost of sales. Okay, we can go here and do this. We can say equals labs.generative AI. My prompt is going to be what is an optimal cost of sales percent for a coffee shop? Okay, so that's our prompt, our temperature. We want this to be fairly repeatable, so we'll do a 0 0.2. And then for this easy question, I don't care about max tokens or the model since I already have it set. We'll hit enter. Hashtag busy means it's running and it's contacting OpenAI for a response. And here's the answer. An optimal cost of sales percentage for a coffee shop typically ranges from 25 to 35%. Now, this is really great, but I just realized I wanted to output a number. So let's go ahead and add in, output this as a single percentage. 
All right, let's try that again. Okay, much better. That time we got a shorter answer, still a little bit longer than I would like. I would probably like to have it give me just the number, but we did get it down to a single number. It's saying 25%, so that's the input we can use. Let's try another one. We can say target labor cost. Okay, I'm gonna pull this one down. And we can say, what is an optimal labor percent for a coffee shop? I'll put this as a single percentage and it's gonna be running again. So an optimal percentage for a coffee shop is typically around 30%. So now we've got our targets. We wanna make sure that our cost of sales is 25% or below, and we want our labor to be 30% or below. What a cool way to be able to pull inputs in. There's even another thing that I was playing with. You can actually get this to generate some tables if you put it inside the text split function. I've got a formula here, because this one's long. I don't want you to make me watch me type it out. So this formula is gonna say equals text split. It's gonna ask me to give me a macros depreciation table for a five, seven, and 10-year asset. That's everything we'd be using in a coffee shop aside from really the building itself. It's gonna split them using the line. So here it is using text split. It's fed it into multiple columns. The response of our prompt you'll see is still right here. And then it's feeding over here. So it looks like I've got my five-year right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, then it's got my seven-year. And then it's gonna go over to my 10-year. So a really cool way to pull things in. Again, the equals copilot function has a lot of bells and whistles, but it's really inaccessible to a large population of Excel users, and you're gonna have much better luck getting access to this through Excel Labs. Now, number five is the new agent mode from the Frontier program for Microsoft Excel. It's still testing, but just like the lab's generative AI function, it's available to anyone who does this add-in, unlike equals Copilot, which is still only available if you have a beta version of Excel. Now, this is the one that when it came out the week before last, it literally made my jaw drop. You will not believe what this one can do. So we're gonna go back to that Excel Labs that we installed for our generative AI. Instead of opening generative AI though, we're gonna open up the agent mode. And now a window is gonna come up that looks just like Copilot, but it's for an agent. Now, if you're not familiar with what agents are, agents can run multi-step AI processes and make decisions without your input. It can actually look at the work it's creating and make decisions and keep running additional processes based on the decisions. So instead of having to, you give it a prompt, it gives you a response, you give it a prompt, it gives you a response, you can give it an instruction, a goal you want it to accomplish, and it's gonna do whatever it needs to do to run that goal. So let's go back to our very first example when we did chat GPT to build a very basic three statement model. Let's see what happens when we feed it into an agent instead of a chatbot and the difference we get back. So I'm going to paste this in, create a fully functional three statement model for a chain of three coffee shops. I'm not following my AI prompting framework, the Spark framework, because I want to show you just how little guidance it needs to give you the output it's looking for. So we want a fully functional three statement model back. Let's see what happens. All right, agent mode's running and it has started its reasoning process. So you see, this is something I was talking about. You see how it says it's outlining the execution steps. That's one of the really big differences of the agent is it's creating all of the steps it needs to do. It's gonna run a step and then evaluate the output and decide if it needs to change the next steps. Whereas a chatbot is just gonna come back once it's done the step and ask you for additional input. So agent mode reasoned for kind of in the 15 to 20 minute range because it was doing some really serious work. Now that's one of the things to know about the ages is it's not gonna be the couple of second response you get from a chatbot, but that's because it's doing hours worth of work for you. It's going off, it's doing it. You can let this run and go do something else, but let's see what we got out of this. So we have the agent mode. It's understanding our task. The goal was to build a fully functional link three statement model. It's saying, I need to create all these things. I need assumptions, drivers, schedules, income statements. I wanna output them on different sheets with a five-year timeline. It's listing out some assumptions it will use that we can change later. And then this is the plan it was gonna work through. So it was gonna do these 11 things and then make sure that it tied out. Again, a reason for 990 seconds before it started working. Went back saying, here's all of the things I need to do. I'm gonna go through and work through all these. And then what it created and where to find it. So it gave us instructions saying, here's where I put everything. Here's how I formatted it. All of the assumptions it used and why it used them. What drivers it's using on the different driver sheets. This is really cool. The schedules, we've got CapEx, depreciation, working capital. Man, this is better than some financial statements I've seen out in the wild cash flow sheet, balance sheet, giving us all kinds of instructions on how to use this. It even went through verification and completion, and it fixed some stuff during the build that it noticed was wrong. This is not something you would ever see out of a regular chatbot like Copilot. And then here's how to use and change the model, and then some formula examples that you can learn from. We can come over here and take a look. So here's our full assumptions table. 
This is somewhere we can get, kind of go and do all the edits. We come into drivers, so we've got our we've got a number of shops coming from the assumption table. A lot of this is pointing back to assumptions or it's doing calculations. If I come over to the schedules, here's our PPE, depreciation, inventory. Again, all of this going back to drivers and assumptions that is all linked up. It's built this, it's tested it. It's got our income statement here. This is all, again, linked up. You'll see it's linking to schedules and drivers and doing the math. It's even given us some charts so we can look at our revenue versus our net income. Here's our cash flow statement. Again, all linked up just like we want it to be. And then our balance sheet and the balance sheet indeed balances. We just watched AI think, reason, and build an entire financial statement model without us having to touch a thing. We can be working in other files that it can come in here and do the work for us. Then we can come in and put on the final polish. Again, no AI tool right now is ready to do 100% of the job for you, but it will get you 80% of the way there while you do something else adding value, and then you come in and add the last 20% of value. But this is a true game changer, and I cannot wait to see what comes next. If you've enjoyed this video, I highly encourage you to take your AI and Excel skills to the next level with my seven co-pilot hacks that will save you hours. I'm going to put the link to this video here. Again, this will give you seven co-pilot hacks that you can use across Microsoft products to save hours. I'll catch you over there. Until then, this is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers.